why some scientists are now taking the Wuhan lab leak theory seriously. Since the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, there has been little doubt that the virus emerged somewhere in or around Wuhan, China. There is also a virology research facility there, where scientists have long been studying zoonotic viruses. They determined where SARS-CoV originated, for example. Researchers at the Wuhan Institute of Virology have long and vehemently denied that they had any experience with SARS-CoV-2 prior to it infecting humans and causing the Wuhan epidemic that led to the global pandemic. However, the Chinese government, unfortunately, does not have a good reputation among the international community for transparency, which has been repeated now with the revelation that several scientists at the Wuhan Institute of Virology got sick in November 2019. That newly revealed information has led to serious concern that officials have not been open enough with investigators that are seeking to determine how the virus came to infect humans. A group of experts wrote an opinion piece in Science earlier this month stressing the need for transparency. They acknowledged how far the scientific community has come in learning more about this virus. They also wrote that we still have to find out exactly where the virus came from and that theories of accidental release from a lab and zoonotic spillover both remain viable. They warned that we must be prepared for future disease outbreaks and that such preparation requires knowing how COVID-19 emerged. The prevailing hypothesis still suggests that bats were the original carriers of SARS-CoV-2, and they transmitted it or a version of it directly to a person, or another intermediate species like a pangolin, and then a person. Zoonotic viruses are not unusual. Humanity has dealt with a host of them, and new ones continue to arise all the time. East Asia and the South Pacific is also a location where viruses have tended to jump from animals to humans, many epidemic viruses have emerged there, though they tend to come out of subtropical regions. The United States has funded research in that region, and specifically at the Wuhan Institute of Virology because that's such a practical approach, though pressure led to the withdrawal of that funding. You don't want to study bats in Fairfax County, Virginia, to find out what the animal-human interface is that might lead to a jumping of species, said Dr. Anthony Fauci, the director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. He added that the US had to go where the action is. Scientists have also said that we don't yet know enough about viruses to efficiently engineer one. Stanley Perlman, MD, PhD, a professor of microbiology and immunology and pediatric infectious diseases at the University of Iowa in Iowa City has commented that creating a virus in a laboratory from scratch would be virtually impossible. I don't think we know enough about coronaviruses, or any virus, to be able to deliberately make a virus for release. But it may now be a legitimate concern that there was a sample of a form of SARS-CoV-2 in a lab, and in a biosafety failure, it maybe came into contact with a person, there is still no evidence to conclude that Intelligence happened, communities however. around the world, including in the United States, are now tasked with trying to learn more about whether the lab leak theory has validity. It should be added that at the conclusion of the piece in Science, the authors wrote that finally, in this time of unfortunate anti-Asian sentiment in some countries, we note that at the beginning of the pandemic, it was Chinese doctors, scientists, journalists, and citizens, who shared with the world crucial information about the spread of the virus, often at great personal cost. We should show the same determination in promoting a dispassionate science-based discourse on this difficult but important issue. The theory that COVID-19 potentially leaked into the world from a lab in Wuhan, has recently gained increased traction. The lab leak theory, which focuses on Wuhan's Institute of Virology, was originally considered by scientists as unlikely and even a conspiracy theory. As scientific consensus seemed to settle on the theory that the virus passed to humans via animals, potentially through Wuhan's wet market. However, an inconclusive WHO report on the origins of COVID-19 and reports from US intelligence has suddenly put the lab leak possibility back into the spotlight. 
The WHO report stated a laboratory incident is considered an extremely unlikely cause of the pandemic compared to other possible causes, such as being passed from an animal to a human. Nonetheless, the investigators said more work was needed to definitively trace the origins of the coronavirus. Meanwhile the leading US expert on infectious diseases, has said he's not convinced the pandemic originated naturally, and that more investigations are China needed. has repeatedly dismissed any suggestion the virus leaked from a lab, but other international scientists also want a more thorough investigation to find out what exactly happened in Wuhan in late 2019. Dr. Barry O'Halloran, author of 100 Days That Changed the World, The Coronavirus Wars, spoke to The Pat Kenny Show about why attitudes have changed. He explained, the WHO report which was long anticipated was effectively a very big disappointment. It focused completely away from the possibility that the virus leaked from a lab, that it was extremely unlikely. However, Director General of the WHO Dr. Tedros Adhanom, in a major change of position, came out the next day and said that this report is effectively inadequate, and the WHO needs to do more research. Including Meanwhile, into the lab a leak. U.S. intelligence report released in the final weeks of the Trump administration indicated that several staff members at the Wuhan Institute of Virology came down with symptoms similar to COVID-19 or seasonal influenza back in November 2019. A month before the virus is believed to have spread among the public in China. Dr. O'Halloran said that report was cryptic, but more info has emerged since due to recent reports in U.S. media. He said, now what has emerged is further U.S. intelligence reports released. That goes into far more detail. It says that three researchers specifically were infected with COVID-19 symptoms, and they ended up in hospital in November 2019. That to me is quite a significant change, albeit it's the spooks that are speaking. Another change is that the scientists who originally poo-pooed the idea of a lab leak, saying it was effectively a conspiracy theory, have now backtracked and said we must investigate this in detail as it's a real possibility. It's very possible any lab leak, if it happened, would have been entirely accidental, a result of human error. Indeed, such a thing has happened before, including during the SARS outbreak in the early 2000s, when Beijing lab workers unwittingly passed the virus on to others. The Biden administration, one other big change in recent months has been the start of Joe Biden's presidency in the U.S. His predecessor Donald Trump took a particularly combative stance against China, often referring to COVID-19 as the China virus, meaning his claims often weren't taken seriously by the media or international community. Dr. O'Halloran explained, in the transition to the Biden administration, there has been no substantial change in the policy, or in the attitude to a possible lab leak. What has changed? Is the style. The Biden administration is not taking the insulting line that the Trump administration, and particularly the president, took. The Biden administration, one other big change in recent months has been the start of Joe Biden's presidency in the US. His predecessor Donald Trump took a particularly combative stance against China, often referring to COVID-19 as the China virus, meaning his claims often weren't taken seriously by the media or international community. The US in particular is now keen to get to the bottom of the virus's origins once and for all, believing the recent WHO report is inadequate. They're now putting pressure on the WHO to carry out a full forensic investigation, including access to databases of the viruses that were contained in the Wuhan laboratory. So hey folks if you enjoyed this video please smash that subscribe button and feel free to like and hit the bell icon so you can get all our videos when they are uploaded. See you all soon. Thank you from science and beyond.